Welcome back everybody to BDP Garage. Uh, today I'm in the backyard, as you can see, and I am leveling some concrete around the pool. Um, this particular piece of concrete is just over five inches. Well, this piece is sunk just over five inches. The rest of it, it's about, I've done about 40 linear feet of it. Today, I wanna show you the tool I built for fixing that. And um, some of the benefits of why you'd use a tool like this and why I didn't just um, pay to have someone um, come slab jacket or um, do some of the other things. So one of the other alternatives to this tool is you could get a nice big pry bar, get, get access underneath the slab, use this to pry it up, and then put some, um, have somebody else or a buddy put some blocks or shims or something in there to hold it in place after it's at the level you want. Um, the trouble I have with that method around this pool is that, uh, let me show you, is one, I don't, I have a fence all the way around the pool, it's a safety fence, and so I don't have real access to get this bar in there at the angle I need to. The other problem is I would have to travel all the way around the fence back over here to be able to push that bar down if I did get it in there and then I'd have to get somebody to put some blocks or shims under the under the thing when it's um, leveled and so that's a lot of a lot of walking and a lot of hassle so um, the other problem with that is that this bar although it's really strong it will press and this clay is pretty hard it will still press into that clay a lot and so you end up having to do a bunch of shimming with um, some pieces of wood and I still have to do that a little bit but it ends up you know, a lot of back and forth and trial and error and trying to figure out um, how to get it up to the level that you want. And so um, that's the problem with the pry bar method. The other method that you could use is that you could excavate under the cement or actually to the side of the cement to get a bottle jack down in there. And then you have to excavate underneath as well in order for it to get actually get under the concrete. And so that's a lot of excavating, especially in the summertime when it's hot and humid and you have as many linear feet to do as I do. Um, the um, other trouble with the bottle jack is that you don't need to just dig a spot to, to make room for the jack. You have to dig an, an area as well underneath the slab in order to put shims or bricks, just like the, the pry bar method. Um, and you also have to excavate out a little bit more out here in order to get access to the lifter valve and being able to loosen, loosen the valve to drop the jack down when you're ready. So. That's a lot of work, and I've got um, 20 more feet to go uh, here. You can go up to right about there, and I've got about, here's about 20 feet. And I have already done all this area here. And so it's got, I think it's about 60 feet, depending on where you measure it from. And so I've started right over here, kind of where this deck drain is. And so you can see, that would be a lot of digging and i hate digging especially in this hard rock hard clay so i'm going to keep going i've got this slab here to go and one two three four more sections after that so let's see how that looks so what's nice about the tool is that it is kind of knife pointed and it's open on the bottom so that these two, these three sections are the only sections that need to cut into the dirt. And so you're not trying to, to wedge a giant fat piece of metal through there. You're just trying to get it under here and get it started. You just have to excavate enough to get access to this, to this point in here. And so, and then it's got a nice big fat half inch piece of steel on the back that you can slam on that with a sledgehammer and hammer it under the deck like that. So let's see how that goes. So here we go. This needs to get and that's good, that's it. Then we can get I don't know why I see keep saying we. It's not like it's not like we're teams and teams over here. One of the, the kind of the nice features is that this bar is a little le is is not fixed, and so if I've got an extra bunch of material under the jack portion, I can just adjust this 
I can adjust this up, get it under there, and then all I have to do is bring it down to the jack and then shim it under this portion here. And I've got uh, this little, um, it's really hacked up, piece of sleeve that goes over here and goes under the jack just to keep it, keep it from falling off. You don't want this thing um, holding up a big piece of cement and then sliding off at the last minute. So um, we'll put a couple shims under here. The shims also kind of help prevent damage to the concrete if you're um, if you care about that. So. Okay, I put together a little 60 second montage of how this thing works. Um, essentially, get the jack under that backside. Um, I do have to, dig, you know, sometimes you have to dig a little bit um, to get it to be able to fit under there, and then get a little shim under the the bar on the right side that's hitting the concrete, and you basically just keep. Um, lifted in the jack until the uh, concrete goes up. Um, I did have to take a little bit of a, a, re, uh, a crowbar to kind of pry the two pieces of slabs apart so that they move against each other cleanly. Um, and that's basically a, the idea. And you sometimes, once the stroke gets uh, to the end of the jack, you gotta put a shim under there and then lower it back down and then kind of reposition some more shims. Um, the other thing you'll notice is I put a little graphic of an updated design of this uh, tool that uh, I think I may build and um, give it a try again, just because it's a little uh, little nicer and fixed some of the problems that I had in the first one. So um, this is a 3D CAD file, so um, I'll also put together a little bit of a, a montage of um, the, the design of this tool and um, kind of the welding it up and, and fabricating in the garage if you'd like to see that, so. Okay, that's about it for this video. If anybody's interested in uh, the CAD files for this uh, tool, um, feel free to hit me up in the comment section and uh, I'll figure out a way to pass it along to you. Or if there's enough interest, I may just post it on the website and I'll include a link to that. Um, but uh, anyway, that's all I got. See you for the next one.